So this question comes from Alex, who says, how likely would it be for Parliament to introduce a proportional representation system similar to the rest of Europe? Would this even be feasible given both main parties benefit from a first-past-the-post system? Yeah, so this question came in on YouTube and we actually had two other questions on this theme as well, so we really wanted to discuss it. Uh, Someone else, Steel Patriot 3683 no less, asked, um, are we likely to need a second Labour term before we can see constitutional reform like electoral reform? Um, And then uh, Mudrelks asked um, about whether or not um, there's any likelihood of a Lib Lab coalition, which is obviously linked to the issue. Um, And I I think this is really interesting, like sort of Labour Kremlinology, because um, at Labour conference last year, it was interesting that you can remember how disciplined a conference it was. And Lucy Powell, who's shadow leader of the House of Commons, um, said in an event that she was personally all for electoral reform, but sort of made the point that it would be a distraction from the upcoming election campaign and you have to win under the current system. But then she said, we should be laser focused on that for now and other conversations can come later. And she got into a bit of trouble for saying that and I got into a bit of trouble for reporting it, to be fair, Um, because it sort of hinted at the the sort of, she said, she sort of said the quiet part out loud, which is kind of Labour's line, which is it doesn't want to talk about electoral reform now, but it does want to keep a little sort of chink of light open for the future. Like its final policy wording at the National Policy Forum on the issue pointed out the flaws in first past the post, but said any proposed change must be carefully thought through. So it doesn't shut it down. That is its line. And I think that's to give it cover if it ever needs to negotiate with the Liberal Democrats to get them to prop up a minority Labour government. So um, it is something that they just don't want to talk about, but also have to leave a little bit of um, space for. Yeah, who's that space for, though? It seems as if it's to placate the membership and also, as you say, to prepare for those negotiations if they ever happen uh, with the Lib Dems. I think Keir Starmer was quite clear at that conference that he wasn't going to include it in the manifesto. It's definitely not a priority for Labour. Uh, The other question about it being in the second term is interesting because the first term, no question, is going to be completely dominated by economic issues and by those big five national missions that Labour have set out like electoral reform, I think they'll have justifiably say, look, we tried to bring something about in the past. You know, it was in uh, Labour's 97 manifesto. And then we had the Jenkins Commission. They looked at it and then New Labour sort of dropped it in, in 2001. And then we had the AV referendum back in um, 2012. And that was rejected by, I think it was around, was it 70, 68%, something like that of people. Um, so I don't think there's necessarily a big uproar or call for proportional representation from people. I mean, priorities are elsewhere, and I think Labour will reflect that. And it's interesting because the original question asks about, you know, will there be any impetus in Parliament to actually bring it about if whichever party wins the next election under first past the post. And Rachel, I mean, it's interesting because those who advocate for electoral reform are actually hoping for a slimmer Labour victory because it means that, you know, there there is a bit more incentive to want to change the voting system in order to deliver a stronger Labour or sort of progressive alliance government in future. Yeah, it's one of those weird paradoxes where to do constitutional reform, you really need a sizable majority because Mm. it's such a big thing to change. But if you've got a sizable majority (laughs) under the former system, you probably don't want to change it. Um, I think the question says both Labour and the Conservatives benefit from first past the post. That's true. The Conservatives definitely benefit more than Labour do. If you look at vote share and where votes stack up, because Labour votes often tend to be concentrated in urban areas and cities, loads of votes for Labour kind of don't count because they're already going to win. Um, Whereas the Conservatives have a more geographically spread out vote. So that's one reason that Labour are more sympathetic to voting reform than the Conservatives. And then for the other parties, like the Lib Dems are pushing it really hard. The Greens are pushing it really hard. Reform UK are pushing it really hard from the right. When I spoke to Richard Tice, that's his key aim, like long term goal is to get Labour and the Lib Dems to kind of work together to have some kind of proportional representation. The smaller parties say it's not fair and they make a really strong case for wasted votes and how vote share doesn't map onto MPs. You look at like the SNP get a relatively low vote share but a high number of SNP MPs because all their votes are concentrated in Scotland. You know, if the Lib Dems get that same number of votes, they don't end up with the same number of MPs. Um, But I think it's really important that when parties look at vote shares under first past the post and try and map on how many MPs they'd get under proportional representation, they they don't get too carried away with that because the voting system also impacts how people choose to vote. And if you know that 
you're in a marginal and a vote for one of these small parties would be a wasted vote. You're less likely to vote for them. Yeah. And I think the Lib Dems in particular might well find that if we did have a proportional representation system, a lot of people who currently vote Lib Dem because they're the main challenger party. So tactical voting yeah, choices. They yeah, they might vote for the Greens. They might vote for independent candidates. They mm-hmm. might vote for, for parties on very specific local interests. So it's not the case that oh, the Lib Dems got this amount in this year, we could just map that on and then we'd have this wonderful progressive alliance. And actually, if you look at what's happened across Europe, where most countries have some form of proportional representation, I think Belarus is the only European country that sticks with five past the vote. for quite a few things these days. Yeah, <laughs> Belarus in the UK. Um, you'll see that uh, it doesn't benefit left-wing parties. Uh, you, you've seen the right come in, in in various countries and it really isn't the case that this is like a big left-wing cause. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think we get a lot of questions about this. And actually, when we write about it, I think we get a lot of interest in it from our readers and listeners, because people are assuming who are perhaps more on the left of politics or want to see a progressive alliance that um, a change in the voting system would make it more likely. Maybe at this moment in time, in this sort of particular period of British political history, but everything can change. You know, you can look at a future where lots of London constituencies might reject Labour and go for smaller parties, and then it might not necessarily be the most ideal system um, for Labour. I mean, it was Jacob Rees-Mogg who said that if you try and gerrymander things by making constitutional um, changes, then it often comes back to sort of bite you in the bum as it did with voter ID or he was arguing that it did with the voter ID introduction for the Conservatives because it actually meant a number of older voters um, turned up without the adequate ID. So I, I do think that, you know, obviously in this current landscape, you can see how it would benefit the Labour Party. But I think that's very short term as thinking. Yeah, completely. I mean, people get very frustrated that they look at the vote shares at, at each general election. They add up the so-called progressive or left wing ones is greater than the right wing ones. And the yet yeah, the Tories are in government. So that's yeah. where it, a lot of this anger comes from. But yeah, we cannot confuse the fact that people want this progressive alliance. In other words, they want uh, the progressive candidate to win regardless of which party they come from with constitutional change. Yeah. Because this constitutional change is permanent or at least it will it'll last a very long time. And we don't know whether, you know, you'll have a reform UK or whoever coming and you and making gains from the system. Exactly. UKIP won 3.8 million votes in 2015 and got one seat. That would have had led to them being, if we had a proportional system, having a large uh, number of seats in Parliament. I, I think, yeah, that's the, that's the key distinction here. Yeah. I looked up, by the way, uh, what the public think of this. Obviously, yeah. it is... A relatively niche issue. It's generally people who are interested in politics, who are interested in, in voting yeah. systems. But um, YouGov has a tracker on mm. this and it goes up to uh, August 2023 and uh, 45% of people want proportional representation. Um, 25 first past the post and 30 don't know. Uh, I guess the thing with that is that how many people are actually engaging with the question and if you like is it a key priority for voters and if you go back to the question that says are we going to wait until the second term if you look at the list Mm. of things that are on Labour's plate if they win uh, for their first term this would seem to be very far down the uh, yeah do they do they actually want it as, as in respect to other things? And also, do they know what sort of system they want? Mm. We voted yeah, on systems. Yeah, because proportional representation is not a voting system in itself. It's, no, it's, it's not. People just want a slightly more proportional yeah. system. Do they want what they have in Scotland, where you've got a combination of first past the post and, the and, then, and then the close list vote or the open yeah. list vote? Do you want AV, which we voted on in 2012? Do you want like the AV plus system that came out of the Jenkins Commission? So it's not clear when people say they want a more proportional system, what they actually want. And then when you try and whittle down uh, what that might be and also retain some of the strengths and benefits of first past the post, such as a strong majority um, government, then it's very hard to do. But with the strong majority government one, I think that's really interesting because that is a key argument in favour of first past the post. Like, yes, it's not exactly democratic, democratically, you know, this this vote shared this number of MPs, but you're more likely to get a majority government that can actually enact things rather than a very broad coalition that argues amongst itself. The last <laughs> Which 10 sounds years, very much like the Conservative Party. Well, <laughs> exactly. The last 10 years haven't exactly been like a glowing endorsement yeah. for first past the post producing strong governments. I think we're going to get another interesting kind of thing to think about with this with the mayoral elections that are coming up in May because that used to be single transferable vote where you could vote for 
three, four candidates in order of like who, who you wanted. And if one of them got knocked out, your vote then got added to your second choice candidate. Um, and that's been moved to first past the post. And there's so much going on in London with Sadiq Khan, who's like quite unpopular, Susan Hall, who's a very interesting character, uh, shall we say, and then candidates from the Lib Dems, the Greens, Reform's got a candidate, Lawrence Fox has said he's possibly going to run again. Like it, it's more than possible that somebody could win that election with like 30% of mm-hmm. the vote. And so like the majority of Londoners would have voted for someone else. Do people think that's a good way to run an election? Does that make people think a bit harder? Probably not, in my view, but I think it's worth watching. Yeah, and it's quite something to return to a system that was sort of deemed flawed in the first place. Thanks so much for watching. We'd love to know what you think. Please make sure you leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this podcast, you can watch more of our videos on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe.